Four-stroke open race winner here, taking the win in the heat race, backing it up in the main event. How do you feel about the track out there, and how do you feel about the track conditions being from wet to almost perfect here for the main event? Yeah, the track is definitely uh, nice and tacky for sure. Uh, you know, I can push the envelope a little more. The lines are good. You know, I feel great on the 250. I can really uh, ring her out now compared to uh, the heat races. I was uh, spinning out there for sure. Well, who do you want to say thank you to for getting you out here so you can come out and get this win here at round two of the Tampa Mex Top Gun Dealer Cup Series? Definitely got to thank my whole family, my mom and uh, my brothers and my sister, um, my neighbor, uh, Brian, for, for bringing me out here. Uh, Cycle Springs Power Sports, Race Tech, Fly, Thumper Talk, um, X-Brand Goggles, um, Micah, DT1, uh, Cherubis, um, you know, just everybody. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. And, uh, you know, they make what I do possible. Well, congratulations going out to Scott Meshi getting that win in the four-stroke open here in the main event. So hi, guys. I'm sitting here with the very talented uh, motocross racer, Scott Meshi. How, uh, how nice of you. <laughs> well, you are talented. Thank you. Now, uh, Scott, you're only 19 years old. Yes, ma'am. And when was the first time you got on a bike? Uh, I started riding when I was four years old. Uh, my brothers actually rode before I did, so when I was born, um, you know, I just kind of was brought right into it. But when we're talking about a bike, we're talking about a little bike, uh, right? N well, just a little one to start off with, a little uh, PW50 with uh, training wheels on it, actually. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember my mom said that probably one of the first times that I rode, uh -huh. um, I got stuck in a rut on a, on a jump, mm -hmm. and training wheels, you know, the, the training wheels kept, kept the bike, you know, the training wheels were on the other side of, you know, each of the rut, but the rear wheel was spinning, so I wasn't going anywhere. And I just, and I stood there with my arms up, I didn't know what to do. Oh, that is funny. Yes, pro I progressed very far from that, I promise. Yeah, I know, I know. But your story is a bit unusual. I, I guess you could say that, yes. I guess everybody is unique in their own way, so. That is very true, but you had some health issues along the way. Yes. And yeah. you battled back from that now. What exactly, I mean, what happened exactly? Well, back in 2015, I had a bad case of pneumonia, which sprouted from the flu, and it just got progressively worse and worse and worse. What, just a simple flu? Yep, simple flu. And um, it's funny that my mom actually, uh, my mom had to go to uh, PA for a couple days, and the day that she was leaving, That's Pennsylvania, that, right? Yes. yes. The the morning that she was going to Pennsylvania, I. <laughs> that's when I finally. That's when it hit me. So um, so it was me and my brother Adam, and um, my aunt Paula uh, took care of me mm -hmm. when I was when I wasn't feeling well. But it it sprouted. It turned into uh, pneumonia, and the offset of that was um, exercise induced asthma. Um, and while I recovered, I didn't recover fully. Mm -hmm. So um, trying to use band-aids, for lack of better terms, to try and, you know, get, to get ahead mm -hmm. just was setting me back further and further. Right. You know, to try and keep up with the Joneses, it just, it, it wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, apparently the more that I tried to push through it, mm -hmm. the more it set me back. Right. So for a year, I had to completely just actually do nothing, and um, thankfully, under the you know awesome care of um, USF health doctors, um, I have been brought back finally uh, back to back to 100 percent, and it's it's been interesting. It's been very trying, mm -hmm. and it's been very um, it's very challenging. 
it and it's and um, you know I was far enough removed from from racing that I could have quit. I could have been 100% done with it, and I just couldn't get away from it. It's just something that I. That's just what I do. Um, I love to do it. I have such a passion for it. Yeah, but when you were sick, you were also very much out of breath, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Um, that was that was the walking and yes. Uh, well, I mean, I even to try and to try and run, to try mm -hmm. and cycle, riding and racing just was a struggle. Yeah. And um, you know, even though I jumped into uh, professional arena cross racing, which is in um, like like. Uh, sports arenas mm -hmm. you know not like baseball stadiums or football stadiums so the races aren't very long and even in those short bursts of time that I would be out on the track I would come off and I would just be completely out of breath and mm -hmm. just very 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 out of shape compared to you know my competition very much a struggle so how would you compare the way you were before you got ill and the way you are now well I would say, well, the you know, I uh, before I was before I had pneumonia, I was very very fit, mm -hmm. and I was very fast. Um, it's been interesting though because this time off has, it's almost made me better. Mm -hmm. It's allowed me to mature, and it's allowed me to focus on what I really want, you know, in life and and in my racing, what I really want from it. Right. Um, and it's also allowed me to observe plenty. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And but it's it's funny because it's almost like, you know, observing has been such a great teacher mm -hmm. because I thankfully I was able to go to a, uh, a professional motocross race um, in person and I was able to to watch some, you know, watch the best guys in the world do what they do. And I was able to nitpick some very small details mm -hmm. that they were doing that just made them that much better. And I believe that I have learned from it. And it has, it just, now I feel awesome. I feel more confident on the bike. I feel, I feel as confident as ever. And I, you know, I have been, you know, really working my butt off trying to, you know, be as physically fit as possible. Mm -hmm. And while, important. yes, extremely important. Um, you know, if you don't have that, then it's just, you know, you're, you're not, you're not going to be able to stand a chance against you know the top level of racing, right. you know that I that I do if you're not physically fit. You know people think of physically fit of oh well you can do things for a long time. Well no, it's not only that. It's just being able to handle the intensity. Mm -hmm. You know even if it's for a short amount of time. Um, you know those short sprints they will get to you eventually. I, I am sure. Now do you have the same sponsors as before? Uh, I have different ones. Uh, a lot of really good people have stuck behind me. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very thankful for that. Um, you know, those that you didn't want to return my phone call when I was getting back to it, they've been they've been weeded out. You know, of my program, and it's a shame. But at the okay. end of the day, you know, uh, you know, the good people have stuck with me, and I found new sponsors. Um, you know, people that that want to that want to help me yeah. and want to see me, you know, be my best and want to see me succeed and you know they want to help me as much as they can um, but a lot of a lot of um, great people behind me truly and um, I'm super thankful for that and a lot of a lot of people who have even stuck with the year off you know a lot of times you know it's easy to be for, to be forgotten in motocross I'm sure. yeah. because you know if you're not there then you're not making an impact you're not you know you're not worth their marketing dollars so you know to to be able to have people who even after this time off have stuck behind me is just Awesome. Never would have never would have guessed that that would happen. So what's next for you? Uh, well, I'm going to be qualifying and racing at the largest amateur national uh, in the world for motocross mm -hmm. called L the uh, Loretta Lynn's yeah. uh, Amateur National. Uh, that takes place in Tennessee and that is in the end of July, uh, early August. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then on to uh, Pro Nationals, so on to the, uh, the full-on professional uh, race circuits. Um, I'll race the last three rounds up in New York uh, and Maryland and Indiana mm -hmm. and then I will prepare myself through the winter months uh, for professional arena cross. I have to go back uh, and get points um, in the professional arena cross um, series in order to get my uh, professional supercross license which is the top top level of racing. So you know it's very, very close. It's quite hard to imagine, you know, a couple of years ago, it, while you're like, oh yeah, well this is this is the dream, and now it's like, okay, well it's it's right there, being fully professional, and that just having that be 
my life. It's it's very interesting, very um, very realistic. Well, you know what is the saying? Do what you love and love what you do. If you have a passion for it and a drive for it, you know that hunger for success, then you will be successful. I find it's a mindset. I find that you know it's it's kind of funny. I know working out, you know, off the bike. Me, of course, training on the bike is a lot of fun. I enjoy because I after that year off. I missed the bike so much. Mm -hmm. And when I got back on it, I just had a smile on my face. You know, I, I always have a smile on my face when I'm on the bike. Yeah. And even just not being able to work out just was awful. So, you know, it's as, as funny as it sounds, you know, as much as much as it is not that fun, you know, I still am happy to just be able to go and work out and be able to, to feel progress and make progress. It makes and you appreciate life more. It does, it does. You know, I, it just, even just those simple things, just you know, when you have it all taken away from you yeah. and you have to work you have to work by not doing anything it's it's such a backwards thought process and that's why uh, when the doctor's like you need to actually do nothing and I I was like I don't know what you mean I don't know how to do that yeah. <laughs> that's not what I do um, it was you know it just to be able to go and just do those simple things just to be able to go and work out go to be able to get on my bike and just go ride you know even you know the pain in the butt parts of working on the bike yeah. you know that's I'm, I'm thankful to be able to do that you know my you know sometimes I get caught up and I get mad at the bike because I'm just not doing something right my mom's like yeah well remember a year ago when you, know, you didn't have the bikes and you weren't even able to go ride and you didn't even really think you were going to be riding you know think of where you think of how far you've come and I'm like oh yeah okay I suppose yeah so you know I mean life's a journey it is it is a journey what is your take on life how do you see life how do you view it that's a that's a rather interesting question. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you'll never get two answers the same on that one. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. I as being 19 years old, uh, I you know I have I have quite a bit of life left to me. Um, you do, but I always have said to you, you're an old soul. I know, I know. <laughs> I um, personally, I I'm really thankful that I'm able to make something of of something that I'm so passionate about, mm -hmm. and I'm really really thankful that I can that I have the ability and that I'm able to make use of my ability. You know, my I'm able because there's there's some people who just they just don't like their life because they just don't get to do what they love to do, mm -hmm. and that is a they just and they settle. But yeah. that's I don't think that that's what life's about. I don't believe in settling. No. I believe in. I, and I mean, I truly do this in every single, you know, part of my life. Whether it's racing, whether it's academics, I hold a 4.0 in college, and I'll have I'll have my associates by the end of this year. And then, you know, um, I'm looking to eventually, whether that's after racing or during racing, I haven't decided yet. Um, go for my bachelor's uh, uh, in physics. So it does not matter what I do. I always strive to be the best I possibly can be. And whether that's for myself, whether those, you know, for those around me, you know, mainly I, I do things because I want to do them. Mm -hmm. Of course. And because I love to do it. And I don't know if that's the competitive streak in me that makes me feel like I need to always win. But at the end of the day, I just, I personally believe that you should do everything you can to be the best person you can be. Whether that's to yourself, to your family, to your friends. You know, be the best friend you can be. You know, be the best brother, you know, mother father whatever whatever it is just be the absolute best you can be so that way it, you know that way it might inspire someone else to be the best they can be you know that's how that's how you progress as a person that's how we progress as the human race is is you know you don't you know um, we wouldn't have discovered that earth is not the center of the universe if we wouldn't have asked questions if it, you know those guys who who were made fun of and i i can't really conjure up the names right now i do know the names though i promise <laughs> <laughs> but you know you know some guys they were even they were even put to death because they thought that these that these men were were corrupting the youth mm -hmm. when they were that they were spot on and you know you don't you don't learn things unless you try something new and you go you know and you go against what other people what other people think Mm -hmm. That's just how it is, you know. A lot of a lot of people are like, "Oh, well, you need to do this, and you need to go to school, and you you find you find you know a good job that pays good, so that way you can live a nice life." Well, I mean, that's that's some people's uh, mo. Yeah. That's, but you know, life's a school. 
It is. It is. You, you, you always are constantly learning. Mm -hmm. Then there's always something to be learned from every single experience, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. You know, it's, and that's another thing that I've really uh, had to, had to you know, learn about, you know, especially with racing is even if you have a bad experience on the track, you need to learn from it. Yes. I mean, you don't dwell on the situation because it's just not good for you. You don't dwell on the bad. You focus, you focus on what you do right and you learn from your mistakes and you make yourself better. All over the states yes I have I've been everywhere except for like the the West Coast mm -hmm. uh, I have not been there yet yet um, but I have been to Texas and Oklahoma Minnesota Montana uh, all the way up to Maine down here in Florida of course um, and pretty much every state in between except for the West Coast now when you've been racing have you been funded um, most of most of my effort has been self-funded. Mm -hmm. um, I have had um, a few sponsors that you know have pitched in to make my transportation costs a little easier, mm -hmm. um, or like if I needed to uh, rent a van or a truck. Um, you know, I've I have had um, people um, help me, but it's it's a family effort. Right now, it is a family effort, and that you know that's what counts is right now. Yeah. And it's you know it's my family, my mom. My, my brother Keith and Adam and my sister Amanda, we all make it work. It's, That's beautiful. It we is. We all come together. It is. You know, it's, it's no, it's, there's no such thing as, you know, one person's on their own. No. It's, that's just not what it's about. You know, that's, that's really counterproductive. It's, it, you know, and it, it, it is true. We're all here to support and help one another. Yes, I, I, I believe that. I mean, heck, even just my, my mom, you know, decided to, to go back to college after 35, 36 years. Yes, she did. So, you know, and, you know, she it wasn't, you know, she's not the best with technology. So, you know, in her computer class, you know, I, I help her and I give her tips, you know, just even just simple things like that, you know, that I can help. I mean, she's Lord knows she's done, you know, plenty, mm -hmm. you know, more than more than enough for me. You know, she has been a huge supporter, mm -hmm. of course, since day one and, yeah. you know, continues to be. So, you know, just by giving back that, you know, I give as much as I possibly can. You know, I, I try to pay back, you know, all that's that's given to me. You know, of course, some people think of mon monetary, you know, value, but no, I don't believe in that. It's not about that. I, 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 you know, I very much believe that if you believe in your own success, and you keep at it, that abundance will be yours someday. It will, and I mean, truly, the, the hard work aspect is, that's, um, it's more real than, than, than most people realize. I mean, you have to be fully, 100% dedicated. You know, I know that, that me, I have to eat, sleep, and breathe what I'm doing. You know, you it's, do. it's, mm -hmm. it's truly everything from getting good sleep to <laughs> just even something simple as what you eat. And you well, know, your body is your temple too. It is. It is. You know, I have to. I have to treat myself. You know, I have to treat myself right, and that is. I've I've learned that quite quite a, you know, quite um, I wouldn't say easily, by any means. But you know, it's the same in um, car racing, Formula One, um, or um, where I was at at the Grand Prix in Saint Saint Pete, with the Pirelli World Challenge. Drivers have to be a certain weight. If they get heavier, it makes the car. Oh wow! Yeah, it makes the car heavier. That's well. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I guess it, it would. Adds to the weight. Right. It adds to the and weight. that changed the dynamics. That's it interesting. Does. I have I have massive respect for those guys. Any any type of racing like that, that's awesome. I love I love motorsports. You know I um I don't particularly care for NASCAR, but I mean to each his own. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. I'm not gonna judge you if you like it. Any last words you want to add before I wrap it up? Um, I mean, I just have to say that if you're going to do something, make sure you do it 100%. Don't go at it, you know, 50, 80, not even 95. Make sure you're, if you're going to do something, you do it 100% because 
that is the only way that you are going to get the absolute most out of it. And, you know, make sure it's something that you love. And, you know, there's, and it's okay to fail because failure is the best teacher. Yeah. It, it truly is. Um, Lord knows I've done that plenty. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's made me the person that I am today. And, you know, while I'm only 19 years old and I know I have a lot left to, you know, live for, it, I really do believe that, you know, even if it's, if you end up not liking what you're doing and you want to switch something completely, as long as it's something that you love, do it. You know, it's, I mean. If you take risks, you know, then you jump off that mountain, you jump off that cliff and you'll soar. That's, that's, that's 100% true. I mean, heck, um, let's see, more, I don't think um, Bill Gates, I mean, um, Oprah Winfrey was, was fired from, what was it, NBC? Or, mm -hmm. or I mean, some major broadcast television, and, and look at her. I mean, it's, you're, you're never, it's, you can never be too old to pursue your dreams. That's, that's true. That is very true. Now, I know that you are going to be successful because you believe in what you do. I do, I do, and I'm very, very confident in this. You know, that's something that you can't teach and you can't, no. you know, you can't coach somebody to be, to be confident. You... No, but the beauty of you is you're confident but yet humble. I try to be. I, I, um, I always remember where I come from. Yeah. And I, I know how far I've progressed. And I know, I know for a fact that I would not be where I am without those around me yeah. and those that have supported me. And, you know, even today, those that, that you know, just add so much to my life. Um, just, you, you have to be thankful. Yeah. You have to be I thankful. Agree. So I'm gonna say, watch Scott Mashey, because I know he's gonna go far. <laughs> so I'm gonna wish you luck for this year. Thank you, thank you. It'll be a good year. It will I'm, be. I, I feel it very will be. good about where I'm going and, and you know how, how I'm going to get there. I have a plan. Yeah. So that's, that's, the, that's the hardest part. You know, then, you know, I believe I have the mental part down, which is, yeah. That's that's the uh, that's the hardest part. But you've got it. Yes. You've got it. Yes, I do. I feel I feel very good, and I'm I'm very thankful, and you know, I have good people. I have I have good people like her, <laughs> you know, to you know around me. Well, thank you, Scott. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect.